Ladies, gentlemen, welcome to my guide for the gun running career challenges. Let's start off with a few basic things that are worth considering before getting into this. All the tiers can be worked on at the same time. So doing a sale mission for the tier one objective will also count towards the big 25 million that you will need in tier four. There's kind of a choice that you have to make with this one if you have nothing completed with this yet. Do you want to go down the research path or do you want to go down the sale path? Because honestly, this kind of the two choices you have. If you're going down the research path, it's important to know that you're going to need about $5.6 million to fast track everything because waiting for this stuff is just a giant waste of time. If you're going down the sale path, you want to make sure to keep doing resupply missions rather than buying supplies. While it is a much better idea to buy supplies rather than do resupply missions, if you're looking to get the tier three objective done where you have to get 25, it's obviously a better idea to just do them over time. If you need more information, information about the inner workings of the bunker make sure to check the top right of your screen now without further ado let's get into tier one tier one requires you to simply buy a bunker and set it up you can buy a bunker at the maze bank foreclosure website the best location is too much completing a resupply mission can be done like shown on screen completing a research project can be done as shown on screen you want to make sure as well that your staff is set to doing research rather than doing manufacturing because research obviously is what you want to be going for you can also fast track the research by waiting until there's a little bit of research done and then just simply spending $225,000. Tier 2 requires you to purchase a mobile operations center. You can find this on the Warstock website. Once acquired, you can head inside and then you can find the screen on the wall where you can start a mobile operation mission. Next up, you're required to deliver excess weapon parts to Emanation. The truck for that can be found inside of your bunker, like shown on screen. When next to the truck, you can press right on the D-pad to start the mission. And finally, for tier 2, you are required to do a sale mission. I would advise to wait until you have a full bunker for this one, because it will help you in the long run. But if you just simply want to get the objective done, you can sell any amount to complete the objective. Tier 3 is where stuff gets a little bit more challenging, so let's start off with the easy stuff. Upgrading 5 weapons to the Mark II versions is something that where you need a weapon bench for. You can find this in the MOC, Terabyte, Freak Shop, Arena, Arcade, while there is a Heist Active, the Hangar, Adventure, Agency, and the Kasaka. The only free location out of this bunch is the Freak Shop, which you can find over here. The next objective requires you to complete 25 resupply missions. Now the best way to go about this if you just simply want to get it done is just wait until there's a little bit of supplies taken away so you can do another resupply mission and just keep doing that until you have all 25. And the final objective for tier 3 is to complete all the challenges for one weapon inside of the shooting range. The easiest out of the bunch honestly in my opinion is the heavy sniper one or the combat MG. So pick either of those two if you just simply want to get this objective done. In tier 4 you are required to research 25 projects. Now the best way to go about this in my opinion is to simply fast track everything. Wait until there's a little bit of research done and then fast track by spending $225,000. This will cost you a total of $5.6 million but because you will be done with the research you not only have a bunch of fancy new stuff that will be very useful to use in the long run you will also be able to start working towards the $25 million that you'll need to earn in total while using the bunker. And you guessed it, you'll be earning that money back pretty quickly. But as mentioned before, you will have to do $25 million worth of sales. Now there's two ways how you can go about this. Either you can decide to sell an invite only session or you can sell in a public session. Selling in a public session will give you some bonus money for doing so. It's 2% more earnings for every player in the lobby, which you can actually add up to a couple hundred thousand dollars extra for every single sale. This becomes especially nice when there is bonus cash happening on the bunker, meaning that you'll be earning even more money because yes, both the high demand cash bonus and also the double cash will be counting towards the total amount of money that you've earned within your bunker and thus the challenge. But obviously selling in a public lobby will come with some risk as well, so it's entirely up to you whether you want to take that risk and earn a bit more money and speed up the process a bit or go with a safe route in an invite only session. 
Having said that, if your stuff does get destroyed in the public session, you can always just simply find a new session or quit the game in order to save some of that stuff. Alright, let's start talking about the shooting range challenges. First and foremost, here is where the location of the shooting range is, and yes, you will have to buy it on the Maze Bank Foreclosures website if you don't have one yet. It will cost you $740,000. One thing I would say is pretty much a necessity within these challenges, especially for the tier 3 challenges to be able to complete them, is is by getting the drum magazines or the box magazines for the SMG, Assault Rifle and the Carbine Rifle, as well as for the Combat MG. If you are unable to get these weapons, you can acquire them through the agency or through the gun van. Another great tip I can give you is lowering your sensitivity. Personally, I found myself overshooting a lot of the targets because of how close they are, so I lowered it down basically all the way to one sensitivity, but feel free to adjust it to your own preference. It will save you a bunch of time and a lot of hassle. In the first two tiers of the pistol challenge, you will only be getting targets that are at the bottom. Make sure to shoot every single one of these targets in the head and make sure you don't miss any shots to keep the multiplier going. Letting go of the multiplier will basically mean that you will miss out on the challenge. You can take your time with aiming here, the time is really not going to be your enemy in this one. The tier 3 challenge is where stuff gets a little bit more interesting. You're going to have some targets that are going to be spawning up top as well. What you want to be doing is make sure that you hit the targets up top in the body and the ones below on the head. By doing so you'll be able to take down targets quickly, keep the multiplier score up and hit as many targets as possible. In the pistol tier 3 challenge it's really not necessary to you go for headshots only, primarily because it will be a waste of time and you can keep flicking between different targets. The tier 1 challenge for the SMG will once again only have targets that are below. What you want to be doing with the SMG is you want to be going for a burst fire action. Going full auto with this weapon will most likely mean that you'll start missing shots, thus missing out on that multiplier. If you want to get a good idea of how I'm doing that, please listen to the audio that will show you right now. Tier 3 will be utilizing the exact same strategy as Tier 1 and 2, burst firing, shooting the targets below in the head and the targets up top in the body. Now obviously this might come down to RNG and will take you a time or two, but generally speaking it's not too bad. With the Assault Rifle, we'll follow the same strategy as the SMG. The first tier will just simply be nothing but targets down below, so make sure to go for those headshots. Again, we want to be burst firing to make sure that we don't miss any targets. The rate of fire of the Assault Rifle is slow enough for it, so don't worry about it too much. With the second and especially the third tier of this challenge, you definitely need the drum magazine for the simple reason that without it, you'll spend way too much time reloading. And again, you want to make sure that you're doing those burst fires so you can control your fire and never miss a shot. The Kamen Rifle, in my opinion, is undoubtedly the most difficult one, primarily because the recoil on the gun seems a bit odd and the reticle does tend to kick up quite a lot, so make sure to also grab all the other attachments in case you haven't done so just yet. The first tier will once again just simply require you to do nothing but headshots on the ground targets, so that one shouldn't be too difficult. The second tier though is where, admittingly, stuff started to get a little bit more tough for me. So make sure to use that burst fire, hit those ground targets in the head and those higher targets in the body. This one is definitely a bit RNG dependent because it's going to depend on how many times you can get some ground targets and shoot them in the head easily and how many times you get those higher targets. But don't give up, it's very doable, especially if you have that box magazine equipped. Tier 3 is definitely the toughest one. You need to get 3000 points, so try to go for as many body shots and as many headshots as you possibly can. Hitting a few too many targets for only 15 points is definitely going to cost you dearly, but sometimes, honestly, it's kind of unpreventable with the way that the weapon kicks. So, this one is pretty luck based, but again, make sure to use those burst fire so you don't lose the multiplier.
And like with the assault rifle and the carbon rifle, make sure to shoot those lower targets in the head and the higher targets in the body. The common MG is where stuff gets a lot easier. I'd have to say that the first challenge is possible without an extended mag. However, with the tier two and tier three challenges, having an extended magazine is going to be a necessity. Doing this without them will simply fail you the challenge based on the fact that these magazine reloading times are simply way too long. But the moment you have an extended magazine on this thing and just burst fire your way through victory, it is really not gonna be all that difficult. And finally, the Heavy Sniper. Now this one, arguably the easiest challenge of them all. It's simply a matter of just going for headshots and going for those body shots like we have been doing over the past few challenges. Honestly, not a whole lot to say about this one. I'll show you the tier three challenge so you can get an idea of what to expect. But other than that, pretty simple stuff. And finally, for tier 4, you are required to complete all the MOC missions under 10 minutes. This is actually a lot easier than it might sound because you have about 2-3 to three minutes for each mission to spare, sometimes even longer. Having said that, you will need one other person with you in order to be able to do this mission. And effectively, you have to one-shot it because if you restart a checkpoint, the time will simply not count. For the first mission, you want to grab yourself some full metal jacket rounds for your heavy revolver Mark II, so you can help out your friend with shooting down the helicopters and the planes. In order to make this nice and easy, these are all the five different locations and in what order they will spawn. They're all pretty close to each other and obviously in the video I will show you the best route to take for each of these different locations. When trying to shoot down the aircraft, the June FFV gun does a lot of damage already, but if you want to speed up the process a little bit, using that heavy revolver Mark II with full metal jacket rounds will actually do quite a bit of damage. Funny enough, one shot of that heavy revolver will do just as much damage as an RPG or an explosive sniper. Yes, I did test that. If you're doing this with four players, obviously it's a much better idea to split it up and make everything a whole lot quicker. I'll show you on screen what the best way to go about it if you are using two teams. When arriving at the second target, it's very useful to stay up on the hill so the June FAV gunner has a much better angle on the helicopter here. Then you want to make sure to stay behind and then obviously try to help him out as much as you can by firing off a few of those shots from your heavy revolver. You don't have to worry too much about those sticky bombs, they don't seem to do an awful lot of damage to you. And as soon as you're done with mowing down the cargo bob, you want to gun it towards the airfield. Once you arrive at the airfield, it's pretty much business as usual. Just try to shoot it down as quick as you can and make sure to also utilize that heavy revolver again for some quick additional bonus damage. When arriving at target 4 again, you can already start shooting when on this hill. The June FFV gun actually has quite a bit of range, so make sure to focus on driving while your gunner will continue to focus on shooting. And as soon as you're behind the Titan, you can once again help out with your heavy revolver shots. From there, you want to keep following this road until you reach this point. You want to take the off ramp on the left here and keep following where I'm going so you can get a nice good angle on the final cargo bob. This way your gunner can start shooting it down as soon as they see it and it will be able to take it down with relative ease. As soon as this cargo bob is down, it's just a matter of driving back to the location to drop off the June FAV and it will be mission complete. Very simple stuff. 
For the second mission, half track bully, I have a few quick tips to save you some time. The camera number four is the one you're looking for, and when you're on that, make sure to pan all the way to the left to zoom in on the half track. When it's time to complete the hack for the half track, you can put away your phone and just simply take cover and have each of the teammates take one side. Make sure to keep an eye on your radar so you don't get shot from behind or your teammate does. Once you're in the half track, it's kind of just following the line, honestly. Uh, one shortcut you can be taking I'll show as well to save you a little bit of time again. The gunner really is going to have to bring their A game because you can get shot down pretty quickly if you're not paying attention. Those helicopters will kill you pretty quick, so make sure to shoot them down and shoot them down quickly. When starting the third mission, you want to make sure to pick the right anti-aircraft trailer. These are the flag guns and will shoot down helicopters or any vehicles in one shot. In general, the gunner wants to be focusing on primarily the helicopters. Once the first dignitary is in the air, you can start making your way to the second location, which I obviously will be showing on screen. Once you arrive at the second one, you will have to escort him from this side of the airfield to the other side of the airfield. Now, as the driver, you can help out the gunner by taking down some of the police cars that are arriving this way the police cars will also not be able to block the path of the dignitary making it a smoother ride to its destination simply so keep shooting down cop cars as a driver and have the gunner focusing on helicopters until the dignitary has arrived at its helicopter once it's in its helicopter you can make your way to the hangar on the other side of the airfield and immediately start doing the third and final dignitary getting a move on as you're basically done with one of the dignitary will save you a ton of time because the mission objective will update much later then you can actually start moving the third and final dignitary is just simply another airplane taking off so make sure to keep the runway clear and the skies clear of helicopters once the dignitary is in the air you can already start making your way outside of the lsia area where you'll be able to complete the mission as soon as you do so the fourth mission, there's a few things that you can do to speed up the process. First and foremost, you can go on land with the APC to go a little bit quicker, and then obviously go back in the water until you have to hit the checkpoint. Once you do that, don't even bother with the stealth because you're in an APC and you can kill everything in one shot. And finally, when going on the water, it's probably a good idea to bring a scuba suit to make everything a little bit quicker, or if you just simply use a rebreather, that's fine too. Just make sure to use it so you don't drown. You can pick up both of the objectives in one go, no need to go back to the APC to drop off one by one once you're back in the apc just drive back to where it needs to be dropped off it's really not that special fifth mission there's really not much an awful lot i can say other than just keep looking ahead of you if you're driving and make sure to avoid traffic as much as you can keep that speed up but if you lose speed don't panic you will be able to get your speed back relatively easily if you're only playing this with one player make sure that they are in the front gun of the moc for the best gun and also the best angles on everything you as the driver want to make sure that you are dodging traffic as best as you can but if you do get in a hairy situation where unfortunately you are no longer driving at speed you will have enough time to pick up speed again so don't worry avoid narrow roads as much as you can and obviously make sure to take as many straight lines as you can so you can keep that speed up as much as possible whenever you accidentally bump into an npc or two for the sixth mission, it might be a good idea to bring an explosive sniper for the simple reason that you'll be able to take down the signal jammers much safer as well as later targets in a much quicker way too. In order to do so, make sure to keep an eye on the footage as I am just getting on top of my weapon as Tampa here and then from a distance I'm able to fire off a quick 8 rounds inside of the signal jammer to take it down relatively quickly. It is entirely possible to do this with the miniguns. If you were to do so, make sure to focus on the insurgent gunner first, or else you will get beamed down rather quickly. If you're using the dual miniguns, by the way, the sensitivity of this is tied to your look around camera. So if you're wondering why it's going so quick, that's exactly why. So make sure to lower that down before you start the mission. After you rendezvous at the meeting point, make sure to follow the route that I'm showing you on screen, so you don't have to go all the way to Tahiti before you make your way to Elysian Island. Once you arrive the Lysian Island, it's actually a good idea to get out of the weaponized Tampa so you can start utilizing your explosive sniper, railgun, or whatever you want to use to take down these rogue agent helicopters much quicker. You want to focus on the helicopters because the way that you can advance with the mission is based on how much damage you'll be doing. And I think that helicopters are a lot more painful to lose than the bunch of people roaming around the island there. Once you cause enough damage, the rogue agent will spawn and you can start taking it out. Now for this one, you definitely want 
want to start using the mini guns but again make sure to focus on the insurgent gunners if there are any around you because they will shoot you down rather quickly the dual mini guns are powerful enough to make quick work of the rogue agent so it shouldn't be too difficult to take it down once the target is down simply drive to the drop off and mission complete for mission 7 you want to bring a baddie 801 this bike is about fifteen thousand dollars so if you don't have one go and grab one because you'll be able to skip the entire mission by just simply hopping over this wall and then just ignoring all the enemies and then just grabbing the oppressor and finish the mission Th that's it Leave a like for more useful tutorials like this. In the eighth and final mission, you have to prioritize one thing and one thing only. Shoot down the helicopters. The Valkyries are effectively just giant aim bots that will just kill you in one shot because they have explosive rounds and they're also incredibly accurate. So keep your distance from them. Try to shoot them down with an explosive sniper rifle, railgun, RPG, whatever it is that you need to use, but try to keep as much distance between you and them as possible before you even think about destroying any of the objectives inside of the docks later down the line you'll also be getting another helicopter or two so as soon as you see a helicopter on your radar this will not be a police helicopter but instead it will be yet another one of those aimbot valkyrie helicopters so shoot them down immediately other than that the mission is pretty simple you have an oppressor you can shoot unlimited rockets so anything that gets in your way should die pretty easily and that's all there is to it for the gun running career challenges if you enjoyed it or found it useful make sure to leave it a like subscribe for more and if you like what you see on the channel become a member like chloe gta plus left lane looney and only fans maybe do it thank you for watching and i'll see you all later